for attending tonight's meeting. Uh, it's a special council meeting, and the agenda is before you. Um, I'm just going to go through a couple of the, the rules, but the protocol here. Um, whenever you want to speak, um, please state your name. Um, when we're voting, please vote either yes or no. Those are your only two options. Um, I think everyone else knows how these meetings run. Before we begin, uh, Brian, I'd like to say how badly I felt that uh, your mother passed away. Thank you. And uh, you have my condolences to the whole family. I'm sure that I have the, uh, the, the authority to, to say the same on behalf of council. So Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You are a very lucky man to have her for so long. Thank you very much. And uh, so with that being said, um, I'd like to call on Matt on to open the meeting with some comments, please. Yes, thank you very much and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to tonight's first teleconference of the County of Branch Planning Council uh, meeting during COVID-19 state of emergency pandemic. The purpose of this council meeting is to give consideration to various types of planning applications, most of which are zoning bylaw amendments. Planning applications and grants are normally dealt with through a two-step process, the first step being an information meeting, the second step being a statutory public meeting under the Planning Act. Due to the constraints of the pandemic, planning applications will be going forward to only statutory meetings, and only those applications that are not contentious will be heard by Council at this time to ensure that there is a fair and appropriate manner of public consultation. A maximum of five applications will be heard at each planning council meeting. These reports were posted on our website last week, along with corresponding presentation, and each report provides staff's professional planning opinion on the merits of each application. If council deems it appropriate, they will adopt the recommendation tonight and pass the corresponding bylaw to finalize the decision. Decisions of council on planning act matters can be appealed to the local planning appeals tribunal once notice of decision has been rendered. The planner will provide a quick one minute overview of the planning application, including any public input, and then provide their recommendation. Council will have an opportunity to ask the planner questions on the application before voting on a decision. On the phone this evening, we have our, our appropriate staff, planner Amanda Wojcicki, planner Ryan Cummins, senior planner Marcus Davidson, myself as director of planning, and the general manager, Development Services, Sam Dusman, to assist Council. Thank you, Matt. Um, we all understand that these aren't the most ideal circumstances, and uh, especially in the planning department, you really see the pieces of the process that uh, fall a little bit short, but we're going to do the best we can with these five uh, applications and see what happens. Uh, the first thing on the agenda is the attendance, so I'm going to call roll call. You just say present or here. Councillor Wheat? Present. Councillor McAlpine? Here. Councillor LaFerrier? Present. Councillor Howes? Present. Councillor Bell? Present. Councillor Pierce? Present. Councillor Chambers? Present. Councillor Miller? Present. Councillor Coleman? Here. Councillor Gatward? Present. And of course, I'm here. Thank you. Approval of the agenda, please. Yeah. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Howe, that the agenda for the County of Branch Special Council meeting of June the 2nd, 2020, be approved. Are there any additions to the agenda that anyone has? Mr. Mayor, it's uh, Councillor Miller here. Not an addition per se. Yes. Uh, but I'm just wondering, under item number 10, that's the next meeting, um, and I'm asking this because it may be pertinent down the course of the meeting, but do we have a, a date for the next meeting? Because normally we schedule council meetings the fourth Tuesday of the month, um, but is there uh, any planned council meeting for the rest of this month in June that you're aware of, or is the clerk's aware of, or the CAO is aware of, or anybody? Heather? Uh, we are looking, we're just uh, sorting out the reports, we're looking at possibly having a council meeting on June 16th um, and possibly an in-camera session on June 23rd. We're just finalizing what we're sending through to those. Okay, thank you. Any Robert? other questions to the agenda? 
Robert Chambers has a question. Councilor Chambers? Actually, I have two questions. First question, with regard to the uh, agenda, uh, the uh, plan, Director of Planning indicated that uh, we would not be hearing contentious uh, applications. Could someone define and uh, explain what contentious is and what criteria is used to determine whether it is a contentious application or not? And my second uh, uh, question or comment is with regard to the addendum. I received the addendum today at 3 o'clock. There are several items on the addendum, uh, emails, letters, etc., that I'm not sure that everyone has an opportunity to have read, but I have not. Uh, I was working until 5 o'clock and couldn't read them until just uh, a couple minutes ago, and I'm still in the process of doing that. So does the approval of the agenda include the addendum items? Uh, I'll go to Michael first uh, for your first part of your question, please. The definition thank, thank you, uh, your worship. And for you to, uh, to, to members of council, in terms of the question of, of, of the application is contentious, I will freely admit that we, we have clearly erred on our initial um, assumptions on what is contentious or not. I think our initial thought was we would make a, a, a review of the application, its context, and, uh, and, and you know, based on our understanding of the, of the landscape and make a, a staff determination of whether that was contentious or not and bring it forward to council, um, but noting that until it is put into the, uh, to the public realm, we really don't know whether it's contentious or not. So I think, um, you know, uh, when we get to a certain, when we get to, uh, pardon me, Mr. Chair, uh, report planning act application E. 5E, I'm sorry, bear with me, uh, yeah, 5E, I believe the general manager is prepared to, to speak to this further and uh, we have some thoughts on for council on how to deal with this given the information that's been received. And uh, in terms of the second question, does the, um, does the approval of the agenda include the addendum? The, the answer to that would be yes but I think we do acknowledge that quite a bit of information specifically on item 5E has been received in that addendum. Could I ask a follow-up, Mr. Mayor? Of course. With regard to the an application that is deemed contentious procedurally, how is that application uh, considered? Mr. Bradley? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. For you, an application, um, and again, this, this goes back to the situation we find ourselves in, and uh, which is the province has given us guidance that the timelines, the normal timelines for considering planning act applications have been suspended. And so the, uh, the, the report that the clerk provided to the council on these matters was that we would not bring forward, staff would make a decision to not bring forward contentious planning applications. Now that being said, Staff have brought one forward that I think now would be determined to be contentious. Council can deal with it. Uh, staff have some thoughts on how to deal with that. And I think we also have, have kind of reached an understanding that maybe that initial thought that we need to be somehow applying some logic on whether these are contentious or not is, uh, is somewhat fraught with difficulty. And so again, the general manager will be speaking to that later or we can certainly have that discussion earlier. Just one more follow-up, if I might, Mr. Mayor, procedurally, uh, uh, Mr. Bradley, is it uh, appropriate to remove what we would call a contentious item uh, before approving the agenda, or are you going to suggest that we uh, deal with it during the agenda? Mr. Bradley? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, and that, that's a great question, and I think, I think council can do either. Uh, the clerk is suggesting, I think, that council can do either. Um, the council wanted to remove uh, a, an item that it felt was, had become contentious and either defer it indefinitely or for a period of time. Um, it, it would do so by resolution uh, at this time um, prior to, uh, to approving the final agenda. Alternatively, the, the application could come forward. As I mentioned, staff do have some thoughts for council. 
on how counsel might want to deal with this application, given that it has become contentious. Mr. Mayor, I have an amendment to the motion to approve the agenda, if I might. All right. That the item that we're referring to, I think it's 5E, be removed from the agenda. And you can proceed that with a whereas additional information has been received and additional correspondence has been received at a late date with not an opportunity to review them in depth, that it be removed. That is the Roswell concrete? Yes. All right. Looking for a seconder? Second it. That is Mr. Coleman? Bingo. Yep. Okay. Any other comments or concerns? Counselor Pierce? Counselor Pierce? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, before we vote on this, I may be in favor of it, but I would like to understand what staff suggestions were going to be in regards to this application. That may help us decide one way or another. I'm not sure if that's able to do that at this point in time or not, but I'd be interested to understand what staff was thinking. Okay. So our options really at this point are to nix it right here and now and not have it appear on the agenda or leave it on and deal with it and defer it or do whatever we're going to do with it when we get to it. So on the... Counselor Gatworth here, I have a question, Mr. Mayor, regarding this process. Counselor Gatworth? If we're going to remove it from the agenda this evening and we want further information from staff and an opportunity to review all the correspondence that's come in late, could we suggest it be scheduled for the June 16th council meeting that the clerk decides to want to call? Okay. You're kind of cutting out there, Counselor Gatworth, but I think I got the gist of what you were saying. I think probably you would be satisfied then, too, whether we vote on Counselor Chambers to just have it taken right off the agenda for tonight and have it appear brand new at another council meeting. If that would work for you, Counselor Gatworth? Yes, it would be the same thing as a deferral later in the meeting. All right. So we have something on the floor. Mr. Mayor, Counselor Bell? Counselor Bell? Yeah, thank you. I support what Counselor Chambers has proposed, but I think we have a fundamental challenge here. So what happens at the next meeting? How do we address an issue like this that clearly has a number of voices that want to be heard, want to be listened to, and we can't do that until such time as we can have truly public meetings, unless our IT department comes up with a solution which may be novel and creative, which allows those people that wish to make comments to make comments. So I think we're going to be facing this problem again in two weeks' time if we're not careful. But I'd like to generalize it because the item 5D appears on our agenda for approval, effectively. Are we, by accepting the motion that we accepted in May the 5th to deal with any activities we might need to have agreed, have we accepted the dismissal of the two-step process? Mr. Bradley? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bear with me. I think staff have learned a lot. What I can say is, first of all, I would ask counsel for its understanding that this is a new time and we are learning through this process. It has been quite a learning experience over the last four or five days. We will be discussing this. We had discussions today. We will be discussing this further, and I think we are prepared to bring forward another report to an upcoming council meeting on further ideas on how we can make the planning situation, the Planning Act approval situation better. We can consider, again, we had some discussion about the two-meeting process, which I think has merit for us to reconsider, as well as how we can better engage the public for applications which, on face value, appear to be not controversial, but through the release of notices become controversial. So what I would suggest to counsel is 
you know, we are we are learning through this process. Um, we, we've 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 heard a lot. Uh, I've got a lot of feedback from council, and we are prepared to go away and come back, hopefully in two weeks' time, uh, with another report to provide further thoughts to council and maybe a, a recommendation, an amended recommendation or an amended process that would uh, that would allow us to continue to hear Planning Act matters and um, and in a w in a way that addresses some of the concerns we've learned through this process. And again, we are in a, a unique time and certainly had no, there's no rule book for us to follow right now on these matters. So we are, again, learning as we go along. One thing I will add, though, is that there is starting to be more information out there in terms of in amongst professional circles, as well as coming out of the province, on how to effectively engage citizens uh, during the COVID-19 um, crisis. So we, we may be in a good time right now to get better information on how to go about this from uh, other other sources that have more access to information and have more uh, more specialists to, to consider these things. So hopefully that answers the questions that were that were risen. All right. I, I just don't want to see us fall into, you know, deferring something for two weeks or three weeks and then running into the same sort of situation at some point this this uh, system we're trying to work through tonight isn't going to work so we're going to have to do something different next time um councillor chambers has something on the floor he has a seconder any other comments i have one comment mr mayor yep councillor coleman thank you um i guess my comment is and, and i i think i'm going along where where councillor chambers is and this is uh, i was quite upset and, and like him i did not come here from the field to 5 30 tonight and then all of a sudden all this stuff is here uh, I do think that if we're going to do these virtual meetings like this, we do have to have a cutoff date before the last comments come in so we can get them well ahead of time to have them printed out or whatever. That's my comment, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Coleman. Anyone else have anything to say? Councillor Miller here, Mr. Mayor. Um, Councillor Miller. We're voting to drop, if, uh, if, I, if I'm understanding this correctly, we're voting to drop 5D from the agenda tonight yes and that's all we're voting on we don't know when it's coming back if it's coming back is that correct that's right we don't know if it's even going to come back all right yeah I I'll, I will say I was hoping to at least hear it tonight kind of pick stuff around I was thinking we might be deferring it so um, it, it, it just if we drop it and I understand what council chamber is saying obviously there's quite a quite an addendum there but the problem is we drop it and nothing changes. <laughs> um, we don't advance the cause. We, you know what I mean? We don't. Anyway, that, that's how I see it. So I'll, uh, I'll wait till you're called. Okay. Robert Chambers just speaking to the resolution. Councillor Chambers. The reason that I'm suggesting that it be uh, removed from the agenda is that our stated practice was not to bring contentious applications forward. I understand and, and sympathize and, and totally understand the staff's position on determining what's contentious or not, but I, in, in all honesty, this is a contentious application, and if our policy has been not to bring contentious applications forward uh, for a decision, then this should be uh, taken from the agenda and dealt with uh, in the manner that is consistent with other applications that may be deemed contentious, and I think the, the uh, CAO has indicated that staff is working on a system that will alleviate the issue and the problem that we face now, but in the meantime, in order to be consistent with what we said we were going to do, we should remove it from the agenda. All right. Anyone else have anything to, to say? So... Heather, I can just call the call the vote to have it removed from the agenda. Correct. Okay. Before I call the vote, anything else, Councillor Bell? No. Nope. Sorry, um, are you asking me to support? Support council. Well, I yeah. support. Uh, I support the motion. Yes. Yeah. So yes from Councillor Bell. Councillor Pierce. Yes. Councillor Chambers. Yes. Councillor Miller. No. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? No. Councillor Wheat? No. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor Ferrier? Yes. 
Councillor Howes. Yes. How did it work out, uh, Heather? Motion's carried. Okay, thank you. So we're going to take that off the uh, agenda for tonight, and hopefully it'll come back in some form soon. Uh, I hope it comes back at all, but uh, anyway. Uh, anything else to be deleted from the agenda and or added to the agenda? Seeing none, we'll call the vote to accept the agenda the way it's written now. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? No. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? Yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor Ferrier? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Thank you. Number three is the Declaration of Pecuniary Interest. If anyone has one, please declare it now by stating your name. Seeing none, we'll move on to number 4A, a Canesville Community Center. I have that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Coleman. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Miller, that the staff report RCT-20-24, Canesville Community Center, Architectural and Engineering Service Award be approved as presented. Do we have any questions, Councillor Coleman? Councillor Pierce? Councillor Pierce? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, through you. So just to confirm, I, I know it's stated in the report that this is just for the community center part. It is not for the safety village part. I know we had conversations on that before. I just want to be clear that um, once this starts, there's no possibility to re-invoke the thought of the safety village within the plans, or is that off the table for all intents and purposes? Could I call on uh, Kathy Valentine to respond, please? Yes, Mr. Mayor, it's Michael. I, I'll handle questions for this report, and, and yes, oh, I can okay. confirm that this this design is only for the Canesville Community Center and uh, the Canesville or the um, the Children's Safety Village. We were directed to prepare a lease on a on a, on, a, on the property, but adjoining the Canesville Community Center site, it would not be co-joined co or in any way. Um, um, Aligned with the uh, with the Kingsville Community Center. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. You're okay with that? Yeah, I just I, I thought that was the case. I just wanted to confirm that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And thank you, Michael. Any anyone else want to speak to it? Councillor uh, Miller. Councillor Miller first. Sorry, John. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, quick question uh, to you, Mr. Mayor, to Michael. When these guys are done, the architectural engineering services work is done. Is, are we at the stage what they call um, shovel ready? With this project, uh, Mr. Bradley. Thank you, thank you, uh, Your Worship. Yeah, one of our reasons to uh, push this forward now is to get it shovel ready. We're close to being what I would call shovel ready. We have a conceptual design, we have a site, um, we have an approved budget. But having a what I would call a working design and, and working drawings and a prepared tender would be that much closer to shovel ready. But those things can happen very quickly. So. Again, every step we take along this process gets us closer to being fully shovel ready. Okay, thank you, Michael. I think we're going to have a lot of shovels in the ground soon, so just the more projects you can get get together, lined up, I think that's great. Thank you. Who is next to speak, please? Uh, Councillor Bell. Councillor Bell, yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, question uh, through you to Michael. Uh, great report. Thank you very much. Uh, I tried to find the bid. Uh, the tender analysis online, and I couldn't. Um, so I, I'm not sure by what, to what degree the preferred contractor was preferred. Uh, um, maybe you could offline uh, or later let me know how I can access it to get confidence that uh, it was a clear victory for this person, Sheffield Architect. Mr. Bradley? Uh, thank you, thank you, Your Worship. And uh, I think once the council award uh, is, is given, we then post the results on the uh, on the website so we can direct you to that. I can say that the results were very close, four very good firms, um, and uh, so we relied on the scoring uh, as we usually do, especially when they're, the, the, they're, they're good firms. And I think we have picked the, uh, the, the uh, uh, architects with the best mix of uh, quality and price. Councillor Bell? Thank you. No, I appreciate that. If you can let me know how to access the uh, Complete list. That would be great. The the, the winner of the the tender, Michael. Uh, have they done work for the county before?
Michael? Thank you, Mr. I was just, uh, I'm not exactly sure. I don't recall them doing any work for the county, um, but but I know they are a well-respected firm and, uh, and and we have no hesitation in making this award. Um, that I, as I mentioned, though, we received, we received four um, packages from four very, very good firms. So, so we're, we were confident in all four of them. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Uh, Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? Yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor LaFerrier? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, 4B. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor McAlpine that staff report RPC-20-48 Operation Tender Award be approved as presented. Are there any questions to the report? Councillor Pierce? Councillor Pierce? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, uh, I'm just curious because if you look at the uh, the the two um, the two tenders there, if you look at the second one, uh, Brant Co uh, won the second uh, tender and was substantially lower than than Coco, which won the first tender. I was just curious. I, I didn't see Brant Co's name on the first one. I'm just curious. Did they in fact apply for the number one as well, or did they just apply for number two? Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, Mark Eby is on the phone this evening, and I believe he will be able to answer the question. Thank you. Mark? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's two different um, processes that are going on. Asphalt recycling is done by a certain number of contractors. Uh, Branco does not do that type of work. That's why there's a difference in why Coco is doing the one contract and Branco is doing the other. Okay, that explains it right there. They don't do that kind of work. I appreciate that explanation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Any other questions to the report? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Councillor Ferrier? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself is yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Two carried. Number five A, please. Okay, that would be me, John McAlpine. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Wheat, that application ZBA 38-19 RC from NIST and Jenner of applicant for 258 Harley Road be approved as outlined in staff report RPC-20-49. Ryan, did you want to comment on this? Uh, absolutely, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick outline of the of the application. The sub lands are located on the north side of Harley Road, east of West Quarter Town Line Road in the former county of Burford. Uh, the subject lands are approximately 0 0.46 hectares or 1.14 acres in size uh, and are surrounded by agricultural uses to the northeast, south, and west. Uh, the subject lands are designated uh, for agriculture in the county's official plan. The applicant is proposing to amend the current zoning on the subject lands from general commercial C2 to agriculture A to allow for the construction of a single detached dwelling. Uh, just to clarify a question that was raised at the previous information meeting a couple months ago, um, although provincial and county policies generally do not uh, permit residential intensification within agriculturally designated areas, uh, it's important to note in this case the proposed agriculture zoning is consistent with the agricultural OP designation. Um, noting the interesting zoning on the site, staff couldn't find any information pointing to how or when that general commercial zone was applied. Um, it's likely a legacy item from uh, the old for township days. Um, but in, in my opinion, uh, the agriculture zoning is more appropriate for the use of the subject land uh, given the official plan designation and uh, in such, uh, the single detached dwelling is a permitted use uh, within the agriculture zone. Uh, I know there's no objections or inquiries received from the public as a result of the circulation of notices for this application, uh, and therefore I'm recommending that it be approved. Um, so that concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for Ryan? 
One question, Mr. Mayor, if I may. John Bell. Councillor Bell, yeah. Um, through you to uh, Ryan. Uh, it seems like an, an extraordinarily complex process to allow this man to build a single detached dwelling when there's already a single detached dwelling on the property. Wouldn't it just simply be knocked it down and built another one without doing any zoning bylaw changes? What do you think of that, Ryan? Uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, it is an interesting and unfortunate scenario, and as I kind of alluded to previously, it's a unique scenario. Um, but unfortunately, given the zoning, the commercial zoning, a single detached dwelling is not permitted. Um, there's a couple ways of addressing that. Uh, a zoning bylaw amendment application is the most appropriate from a planning perspective. Uh, the planning, uh, sorry, the zoning uh, does not match the official plan designation. Um, that. Uh, existing dwelling would be um, possibly considered a legal non-conforming scenario, um, but in reality, in order to construct a single detached dwelling, it, it needs to be rezoned. So uh, that's unfortunately the way that this one had to had to play out. Okay, thanks, thanks, Ryan. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Anyone else have anything for Ryan? Councillor Pierce. Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Ryan. Mm -hmm. When you look at the in the provincial policy statement in there, in section two three, it, it talks of um, it talks about the the primary dwelling and the primary on, on the plot of land. I'm trying to understand if there's already a dwelling on the property, how are we going to classify this as the primary dwelling when there's already one there? Ryan, yeah, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to, to clarify, uh, that is consistent with the PPS um, uh, guidelines for primary dwellings within the ag, uh, ag, ag designated land. Um, to, to note, the existing dwelling is to be demolished, um, and our agricultural zoning permits one single detached dwelling as of right. And so uh, the, the uh, landowner will be permitted to demolish the existing dwelling, and with this uh, rezoning would be permitted to pursue a building permit to, to build a new dwelling. Okay, uh, thank you for that. And a follow-up, if I could, Mr. Mayor? Sure can. So that being said, and I, and I appreciate that because I've, I've highlighted that in, the, in the, that section. So just to be clear here, are we saying that, that anyone can, you know, rezone a portion of agricultural land to, to build a dwelling? Ryan? Uh, no, uh, maybe Mr. Mayor, to clarify, the subject lands are zoned general commercial at, at, at the current time, and a building permit could not be issued for a single detached dwelling. Um, agricultural zones, as of right... Sorry, you were breaking up there. Oh, I apologize. Um, agricultural zones are permitted, as of right, one single detached dwelling, um, and therefore, this is not a site-specific zoning. This is just a normal agriculture A zoning um, to match the official plan designation on the site. Um, so we would this would not be a, uh, an instance of creating precedent for future uh, zoning to create new um, uh, building lots. Okay, so just, uh, I'm sorry to, to clarify one more time here. So if somebody has agricultural A land, can they can sever some off and put a dwelling on it? No, to clarify, Mr. Mr. Mayor, again, um, uh, provincial and county policies and our official plans do not allow for lot creation within uh, the agricultural and egg zone. Um, so in this instance, it's an existing lot of record that is zoned in a category that uh, does not match the official plan designation. Um, and so the rezoning is in keeping with the official plan agriculture designation. Uh, this is not a new lot being created. It's just simply to rezone it in order to allow for uh, a single detached dwelling to be built, uh, which is not permitted in the current zoning. Okay, thank you, Ryan. And I think you just said the words I was looking for there. This is an existing lot of record, correct? That is correct. Okay, thank you for that explanation. I will forward that on. Thank you very much. Any other speakers? Hearing none, I would call the vote. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor LeFerrier? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? Yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Thank you. We'll move on now to B. It's also going to be Ryan. This is the property at 74 
Simcoe Street. Brian? Uh, thank you again, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the subject lands are located on the east side of Simcoe Street, north of Whitney Street in Scotland. Uh, the subject lands are approximately 0 0.61 hectares or 1.5 acres in size and are surrounded primarily by residential uses to the south, east, and west. Uh, to the north of the subject lands is located the Scotland Baptist Church Cemetery. Uh, the subject lands are located within the secondary urban settlement area of Scotland and are designated as suburban residential in the county's official plan. The applicant is proposing to amend the current zoning on the subject land to facilitate the future severance of an existing dwelling, uh, a church plant, on the easterly portion of the subject land, as well as to convert the existing church into a single detached dwelling and to accommodate a home occupation on the retained land. Uh, in summary, the applicant is proposing to rezone the easterly portion of the subject land from suburban residential to special exception suburban residential to permit a minimum lot frontage of 15 meters for the future lot to be severed, uh, whereas 30 meters is required. Uh, the applicant is further proposing to rezone the westerly portion of the subject land, which contains the existing church, from open space OS1 to special exception suburban residential to allow for a technology development and computer business as a home occupation with a maximum of two employees, uh, as well as to permit a minimum lot area of 2,935 square meters, whereas 3,000 square meters is required, uh, and a minimum street setback of 7.4 meters, whereas 7.5 meters is required. Uh, staff note that we have fielded complaints from neighbors during the circulation process, including the comments outlined in this meeting's addendum from Mr. Ritchie. Uh, both of which were responded to uh, and clarified with no objection. Um, for the benefit of this committee, the clarification from these questions were related to whether the applicant was proposing to build a new dwelling uh, in addition to the already existing man, uh, which was clarified this could not be the case. Uh, both inquiring residents indicated their questions were satisfactorily answered uh, and no outstanding objections. Uh, staff understands the course of these inquiries to be related to, as one resident has suggested, uh, was just neighborhood hearsay, uh, but we did clarify that uh, this afternoon. So staff is recommending that this application be approved, uh, and this concludes my remarks. Thank you. Are there any questions to the planner? Joan Gatwards has a question. Councillor Gatward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you to Ryan. The um, part one plan to our A313, which is the most easterly parcel of part two on our map, um, site plan we received. Um, does the driveway for the home at the end of Queen Street Is it also this parcel? Brian? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Councilor Gatward, the part one on plan 2R8313 that you're referencing is a, uh, that was an unopened, unimproved road allowance, I believe, that was owned by the county and was dedicated uh, to the current landowner uh, recently. And it does not contain uh, the driveway or the property to the east, uh, it does not interfere. I believe on the drawing that you'll see on page nine of that package, uh, there's a proposed driveway shown coming off of Queen Street through that park, um, and that doesn't interfere with the existing driveway to the east. Yeah, I see the proposed driveway coming out to Queen Street, and thank you for reminding me about that unopened road allowance that we conveyed. I, I now remember that, so. Um, the resident that lives at the very end of Queen Street, can you tell me where his driveway is in relation to this map? Brian, were you able to catch that? Uh, yeah, um, to you, Mr. Mayor, I, I believe the driveway um, begins uh, within the existing Queen Street Road Allowance to the uh, southeast, it would be of the part one that was dedicated to the current landowner. Um, and so oh. uh, the, the county wouldn't be able to, uh, wouldn't be in a position to convey an unopened road allowance with conflicting interests like uh, driveways. Um, okay. So we, yeah. are, we are satisfied with that. It was a bit um, confusing when I was on site, so thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Are there any other 
questions for Ryan? Seeing none, we'll turn it over to Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, it's moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Bell that the application ZBA 3919RC from Peter and Kim Rowe, applicant for 74 Simcoe Street, be approved as outlined in the staff report RPT 20-50. Any other questions before we call the vote? Hearing none, Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? Yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor LaFerriere? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Thank you. Carried. Uh, number C. And this is for Amanda. 310 East River Road. <laughs> um, do you want the motion first, Mr. Mayor? Oh, we can have the motion first, yep. Okay, it is moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Coleman that application for zoning bylaw amendment 01 slash 20 slash AW from Case and Wynn Vandenberg. Applicant for 310 East River Road be approved as outlined in staff report RPT 20-51. Thank you. Amanda, did you have any comments on, on this uh, on this file? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I can speak to the application and just give uh, some context. Thank uh, you. The purpose of this application is to rezone a portion of the subject land that are to be severed and merged with an abutting parcel. Staff required a technical rezoning of a portion of the subject land to prevent site-specific provision 45 from being carried over to the abutting parcel when the lands are merged. Site-specific provision 45 permits additional accessory structure area and storage of equipment. The applicant is not creating a new residential building lot, rather a lot line adjustment. No public comments or object objections were received. Staff are recommending approval of this application. This concludes my remarks. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> are there any comments or concerns, questions to the planner? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself, yes. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Councillor Ferrier? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Thank you. Carried. We'll move on to number E. Councillor Howes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moved by myself and seconded by Councillor LaFerrier. Uh, application number ZBA05-20-AW. Uh, applicant 2720784, Ontario Limited. Uh, regarding 56 Cedar Street, be approved as outlined in staff report RPT20-52. Thank you. Uh, Amanda, do you have any comments on this? I do. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you, staff are requiring the holding on the subject lands as a condition of severance approval. Staff required the holding due to the, due to the ongoing design of Cedar Street and wanted to prevent premature development on the retained lands and did not want the development of the retained lands dictating the design of Cedar Street. The applicant will be required to apply, required to, apply to remove the holding at an appropriate time. No public comments or objections were received. Staff are recommending approval of this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any questions for the planner? Councillor Pierce. Councillor Pierce. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Through you. Um, yeah, first of all, I, I, uh, I, I agree with the fact of let's put a hold on this because we, we're not sure what's happening with Cedar Street. So I think that was a, a great idea. Thank you very much for that. My question is, the holding is strictly on that portion of the property. Where I'm going with this is, let's say that the owner wants to do something with the, the house that's existing on the other part. Are they still able to do anything with that piece of property, or um, I just want to confirm that? Amanda? Uh, so, you, Mr. Mayor, so the holding is only on the retained portion, so it's that large 
square that's behind Morian Lane, not the dwelling that's on Cedar Street. Okay, that's where I was going because I, I was asked that question if something was to be done with that house and I, I thought the answer was that uh, they could. I just wanted to confirm that and you have, so thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions for the planner? Yeah, a question from uh, Council Bell. Mr. Bell, yeah, thank you for coming through you to Amanda. Um, thank you for sharing this, but the, I, I think the average resident doesn't really understand what holding means, especially when it's a subtle change. It's gone from R1 to HR1. And I, it may be just something we can learn from that as we share this information with nearby residents, do we give a full explanation of what the holding means? That, that, and that the residents shouldn't have any fear that this is going to make their situation more difficult or less difficult. It's just going to protect them ultimately and protect the county to allow us to do what we would like to do on Cedar Street, which is to everybody's benefit. Thank you, Councilor. That's correct. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, that's correct. Um, so the underlining zoning is not changing. It's going to remain R1. Uh, the holding is solely just so they can't uh, get a building permit on it right now and so we can focus on the design of that Cedar Street. Yeah, and I've explained that that's a good thing for the residents, for those residents that have asked me questions. Thank you, Councillor Bell. Any other speakers or questions for the planner? Seeing none, we'll call the vote. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Myself? Yes. Uh, Councillor Wheat? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. And Councillor LaFerrier? Yes. Thank you. Carried. No longer available for discussion. Uh, going on to number six, uh, information reports. There aren't any. Communications, there aren't any. New business, other business, there aren't any. There isn't any. Bylaws, uh, we're going to do bylaws now. Councillor Wheat? Yes. It's uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Gatward. The bylaw that 45 dash 20 through to dash bylaw. 48-20, skip one, and then 50-20, 50 51-20, and 52-20 be approved. Right, so we're taking first out, time. thank you very much. We're taking out the one, obviously, for the Roswell development. Yes, for, for, bylaw 49-20 has been removed. Thank you. Councillor, we're gonna vote now. Councillor Wheat? Yes. Myself, yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor LaFerrier? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Thank you. Second reading, please, Councillor Wheat. Moved by myself and second by Councillor Gatward to bylaw 45-20 through to bylaw-45-49. Uh, be read a second time, adding on bylaw 50. 2051 20, 20, and 52-20. Be read a second time, and all preamble and clauses be approved. Thank you. Are there any comments, Councillor Wheat, on any of the bylaws? Hearing none, Councillor Wheat. <coughs> Spoke by myself and second by Councillor Gatward to bylaw 45-20 to bylaw 52-20, with the exception of 49-20. Be read a third time and pass, signed, and sealed. Yeah, I don't think we voted on the second one, Councillor Wheat. Uh, I thought you did, but then had questions. But anyway, let's, okay. uh, let's that's do, fine. We'll let's vote on the second reading oh, first. Okay, I'll, I'll vote yes. Thank you. Myself, I vote yes. Councillor Gatward? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Bell? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor LaFerrier? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Thank you. Third time, Councillor Wheat. Moved by myself and second by Councillor Gatworth at bylaw 45 20 to bylaw 52 20 with the removal of 49 20. Be ready. Third time, pass signed and sealed. 
Thank you. Well done, Councillor Wheat. Councillor Wheat, you're voting first? Yes. Myself, yes. Mr. Catward? Yes. Councillor Coleman? Yes. Councillor Miller? Yes. Councillor Chambers? Yes. Councillor Pierce? Yes. Councillor Bell? Yes. Councillor Howes? Yes. Councillor LaFerrier? Yes. Councillor McAlpine? Yes. Thank you. That's the bylaws. Um, before we go to number 15, which is the next meeting, because these are strange and unusual circumstances, is there anyone that any, is there anything anyone wants to say for the betterment of the county? Yes, I just have one thing, Mr. Mayor, that I missed. Councilor Gatwick? If I might. Yep. Councilor Gatwick? Um, on the 74 Simcoe Street application that we have approved, it was referred to in the report as the Scotland Baptist Church Cemetery. The cemetery is actually the Scotland Cemetery, and it is a county of branch cemetery, just for clarification for everyone. Well, thank you for that. Anything else anyone has to say? Yes, we. Councilor Wheat? Uh, the next meeting can be at the call of the mayor. Okay. Everyone good with that? The next meeting would be the call of the mayor? Good. With yeah. that being said, I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Councillor Pierce, so moved. Councillor Pierce, thank you. We, we adjourned. Thanks, everyone.